which view I mean the main square or the big square as it used to be called in here and uh, I'm waiting to to start this tour in to this old Romanian and Transylvanian city I entitled the the tour let's baroque because uh, this was one of the motto of the city uh, a couple of years ago when uh, it was um, European uh, cultural capital of Europe and um, because everywhere the, the architecture of the city uh, reminds us to, to the Baroque style. Till we start the tour, I will let you... Hello, Peter. I will let you to enjoy a little bit this, uh, this large square and the surroundings. The people are refreshing, as you can see, at the, at the fountain from the middle of the square. Welcome, Donna. At about uh, 30 Celsius degrees uh, here today. Being Sunday afternoon, is not so crowded as it used to be uh, in here. And uh, the people are on the terraces hiding from the, from the heat and enjoying a cold beer or something else and uh, I hope you will enjoy the tour that I will start it very soon through Sibiu we have like under one minute it will start and um, as you probably I will let you to take some some pictures yes Peter the eyes the famous eyes so because there are uh, about 30 seconds to the official hour of the tour I will already hello Diana I will already start to, to tell you what is all about here in Sibiu. But first, I have to find a, a good spot. So, uh, as you know already for uh, my other tours, Sibiu is another, uh, another city founded by the Germans at the beginning of the 13th uh, century. The Germans, or the Saxons, being colonized in here, by the Hungarian Kingdom, which um, after the conquest of Transylvania from the Romanians, uh, he decided that he needed to raise the economy of the province, bringing in here uh, artisans and merchandisers from the left side of the river Rhine, from Bavaria, and also Hungarian colonists from Hungary to, uh, to defend, actually, the frontier of the new conquest territory, because the Romanians uh, doesn't want to work for the occupant, but send, send him out over the border. Sibiu, uh, like Brasov, my home city, which have uh, not only the Romanian name of Brasov, but also the German name of uh, Kronstadt and the Hungarian name of Brasov. We have a pretty uh, similar situation in here, with Sibiu having two names the um, even three if i'm thinking better the romanian name sibiu which came from the latin name of the city uh chibinium chibinium uh, it was the latin name of the river which uh, which crossed sibiu hello johnny are from new york <laughs> how's the time there here is pretty hot so this uh, chibinium it's the river which still crossed the city and from chibinium we have the romanian name of sibiu Hermannstadt, it's the German name of the city, uh, and it's, um, it's called like this because the legend is saying that uh, the first um, Saxon um, settler from here, it was called Hermann. And from here, Hermannstadt, the city of Hermann. Also, the Germans, when came here, they started to, uh, to develop the city. 
building uh, building it like any other uh, like any other German cities with uh, with a living room as I call the main square and with uh, streets which was going uh, around of this parallel and perpendicular one to the other and uh, creating a very powerful commercial center and a very powerful uh, center of the guilds from here from uh, from Transylvania here in the council in, into the uh, council square it's in Brasov it's in my home city <laughs> here into the main square into the uh, big square as the people are calling it it was the main place for um, for parties for uh, markets and for executions during the medieval times of course now we have parties and many concerts uh, along the year uh, markets like for example the christmas market uh, no executions uh, in romania we don't have the that penalty since 1989 so uh, this is not happened anymore in here which is very good in my opinion i'm going now uh, slowly to this corner of the square because i wanted to show you much closer this big palace in front of me this big baroque palace which uh, uh, used to belong to uh, Samuel von Bruckenthal, one of the governors of, of Transylvania in, uh, into the 18th century, into the second half of the 18th century, 1770 to be more precisely. And uh, he was uh, a very great collectioner of things. Um, he collected, uh, for example, uh, paintings, uh, coins, weapons, a lot of archaeological discoveries, uh, from the area and uh, because of him uh, we have a very precious relic into the history museum from Bucharest it's a fragment from a bronze uh, lamp uh, used into a church into the uh, fourth century after Christ which is in, uh, which have uh, which carry a, a cross and an inscription which says in Latin uh, ego Zenovius votum posui which it means, um, I, Zenovius, I give this gift to the church. It's one of the very important proofs of our Latinity and of the fact that our ancestors, the Dacian Romans, were Christianized uh, before to become Romanians, which is a very interesting case uh, in here, that uh, we were Christians in the moment when our nation was formed between the centuries three and five. The statue of Brukenthal was revealed to the public only only last year. Uh, I think pretty much in um, in August on on this time, and uh, it's uh, one of the beautiful statues of Sibiu. Also. Um, he was not only a, a collectionary, but um, a very close friend of Maria Teresis of, uh, of Austria. And also, uh, being the governor of Transylvania, he is responsible for the stopping by violence of one of the rebellions of the uh, Romanians from Transylvania. Uh, three headed was uh, three leaders uh, had this, uh, this rebellion, Horea, Kroshka and Krishan one of the martyrs of uh, uh, the Romanian nation from Transylvania, fighting for the rights of the Romanians from here. Uh, despite of this, uh, Brukenthal remain one of the most important. No, no, Joniel, it's the statue of, uh, of Vlade Impaler, of Vlade Impaler, of, of Samuel von Brukenthal, an Austrian governor of Transylvania. About Dracula, I will, I will talk to you in the second part of this tour, when I will enter into the evangelical cathedral to see the tombstone of the son of Dracula. So, um, here in this square, we have displayed a lot of beautiful houses, the majority of them uh, built into the Baroque style because are built uh, into the 18th century. And as you can see, as a, as a particularity of the houses from the city, you can see the eyes from the roof. Uh, actually, the people in here used to build some uh, openings into the roof of the houses uh, to enter in, inside of the attic uh, the fresh air and the light. And those, uh, those openings are similar with uh, some eyes open into the roofs of the city, 
which are looking to the visitors. You can see it much better here. You see, it's like a roof with... Uh... Then, Johnny L., uh, if you love Dracula, you should, uh, you should follow my account from here to be ready to follow me again when I will repeat the tour from yesterday into the city where Dracula was born and I visited the, the house where he was born. And as well, I will repeat very soon uh, the visit on Dracula's castle, which is very close to my hometown uh, at Bran. So if you like Dracula, follow me and till the end of this fall, you will visit again his birthplace and his, uh, his castle. So uh, this, is the per this is the particularity of, uh, of, this, uh, of this city. The houses have uh, those openings into the roof which um, are looking like, uh, like the eyes of a person. That house, uh, which I show it to you in the last two minutes, it used to be the house of one of the mayors of Sibiu. And uh, this mayor uh, of Sibiu, it's buried into the, um, into the evangelical church, like many other uh, personalities of, uh, of the city. And um, I will show you his, uh, his tombstone because he's there into a very large uh, collection of tombstones uh, from the Evangelical Church from Sibiu. Also, I want to show you here if my phone will respect the orders I give it to it. <laughs> uh, so those, uh, those big things on the pavement of the main square are marking the place where it used to be the former uh, cereal warehouses of the town from the 15th century. So here are many of it. The people used to, to keep the, the cereals into these uh, warehouses built under the ground into big holes. And uh, it was standing there in case of siege, in case of attack. They had, uh, they had food, they have cereals to do the bread and to have food to resist. Because Sibiu, as you can see, this uh, large and beautiful uh, main square from here, around 1680, it was a city very close as uh, dimensions to Vienna. And Vienna, here at the gate of the Occident to the Orient, you know, was sieged by the Turks in 1689 for the, for the second time. And um, Sibiu, as I mentioned, was, uh, was pretty much close to, to Vienna. Maybe because uh, it was a very important uh, military and, uh, and commercial center of Transylvania, in Sibiu we had um, a, gar um, a garrison of the Austrian army in here to maintain the order. And in this, uh, in this blue house, it used to be this uh, headquarter of the, um, of the, Austro of the Austrian army in, uh, in Transylvania. And in the house, uh, in the beige house, it uh, used to be also uh, one, of the, um, one of the former, uh, let's call it universities of um, of Sibiu. It was a university uh, where the people were studying mostly law in uh, around 1800. And here near the Brukenthal Palace, this really beautiful building. Today, inside of it, it's the City Hall of Sibiu. And it used to be around 1870 when they built it for the first time. A bank, a, a Romanian bank of the city, an, an agricole bank if you want. And of course, uh, near it, we have, a, we have a big and beautiful Roman Catholic Church, also built uh, at the end of the, um, of the 19th century, on the place of several houses of artisans, which were built exactly here, where now you can see the city hall, the palace of Brukenthal, the former headquarter, of the Austrian army in Transylvania, it was houses uh, demolished to make uh, to make way to these new uh, constructions. And now I want to show you something very interesting. 
which is actually the coat of arms of, the, of Sibiu, of the city. You can find it uh, pretty much everywhere on the pavement. And uh, I will show you in a minute and I will explain it. Before to go to the second square of the city, which is the, the small square, this is the name of it. So, uh, this is uh, one of the coat of arms of Sibiu, which are displayed uh, on the pavement. You can see is the name of the city, Hermannstadt, the Romanian name, Sibiu, the year 2007, where it was displayed. And now let me explain you. The coat of arms says that two knights with swords, and you can see the swords into the image, built a city fortified with walls, and those lines from here are representing the walls of the city, this triangle. City which was surrounded by lakes with water lily flowers, and you can see it here into the three corners of the walls city which doesn't pay taxes to the Hungarian crown. So two knights with swords built a city defended by walls, surrounded by lakes with water lily flowers, which doesn't pay taxes uh, to, the, uh, to the Hungarian crown. This was, uh, this is the explanation of the coat of arms of Sibiu, which starts from uh, one of the uh, first legends about the foundation of the city. And um, you will see this, uh, this coat of arms displayed uh, pretty much everywhere in, uh, in here into the city because uh, uh, it's normal to be, to be there to remind to the people uh, by, their, uh, by their German heritage. As well here, you can see a well into the, into the middle of the square. It was the place where uh, the horses were um, uh, receiving water when they, uh, when they arrived in Sibiu. Now we have also a fountain for the children to, to play and to refresh themselves. And uh, Sibiu is not only a beautiful medieval German city, it's also uh, one of the centers uh, of, the, of the Romanians from Transylvania where uh, the movement from, um, from national freedom of the Romanians from Transylvania was very active into the 19th century after the um, formation of the Austro-Hungarian dualism in 1867. And uh, this statue from here, it belongs to one of the founders of the um, Romanian uh, education system which uh, it's uh, connected, of course, with uh, the city of Sibiu, being, uh, being born here and being very active. This man, Gheorghe Lazar, um, in, um, into this city. And uh, as I said, one of the founders of the educational uh, Romanian city in here in Transylvania. Now here, we are close to the, to the council tower which is a square tower, as you can see, was uh, built uh, for the first time somewhere into the 15th century. It was uh, guard the, um, the second lines of walls of the medieval city of Sibiu, uh, being a watchtower uh, to see the enemy coming and uh, everything was happened into the city, like, in, like uh, dangerous events, for example, a fire. And uh, today, it's, uh, it's still standing, as you can see. And also, this uh, beautiful restaurant that you can see it uh, here near to the tower, uh, it used to be in this house um, around 1600, around 1700. It used to be the former um, city hall of the city or the council of the city, where the councillors uh, deciding all the important matters which have to be uh, done for the people from Sibiu. I will go uh, under this uh, under this tower and I will go to the small square. Into the small square, the people used to 
used to organize the fish market of the city. And uh, of course, uh, here the story is a little bit more interesting than into the big square. We have another homes, another houses, another rise, and of course the the tower of the evangelical church, which is uh, placed into the Huet Square, which is the third square of Sibiu, uh, and I will go towards there uh, in the next minutes. Till there, I wanted to show you the fact that this street that you can see it in front of me, in front of you, uh, it used to be around 1400 to be a tunnel uh, between the lower city and the upper city where we are now. Thank you, Johnny L. And um, somewhere around uh, 1550, 1570, the people demolished that, uh, that, uh, that tunnel and starting to build houses for the people. And uh, those houses doesn't resist too much because uh, it were demolished around the 1600 moment when uh, the people from Sibiu built the bridge over that road made by them. And that bridge has a very, hey, <laughs> and that bridge has a tourist, have a very interesting uh, history, which I will tell it to you uh, in a minute. So uh, I will continue into the small square. Here are a couple of uh, artisans' uh, houses from uh, from the old Sibiu. You can see the where there it uh, it says City Stay Hostel. Uh, it used to be uh, the pharmacy of the city, and all those houses were uh, built pretty much in the same way. Uh, like this one from here, you can see much more clearly because uh, are not terraces in front of it. So uh, at the first level or the second level, uh, leave the family of the artisan and down at the, um, at the ground floor, uh, it used to be the shops or the, um, the places where he was working and was selling uh, his products. Uh, pretty much is the, same, uh, is the same way to build. And uh, speaking about uh, the artisans, which was reunited, like I told you yesterday, in Sigishwara, and one week ago in Brasov, uh, they were re reunited in guilds. And this house, this beautiful house in front of me, which now it's into a process of renovation, like uh, it used to be for about two years, the evangelical church. Uh, it used to be the house, the main house of the guilds from Sibiu. Uh, and actually in one of the uh, sides of this, uh, of this house of the guilds, it was the butcher's guild from Sibiu um, active. In, uh, in this house. is the original house from the 16th century, where, uh, which still remain um, standing in front of us as a, um, as a proof of uh, one of the most important periods of this city. Also, I want to go very slowly to cross the bridge, which I told you uh, the people were uh, built over that road, which was um, uh, first of all, a tunnel of communication between the lower city and the upper city. Then uh, were built houses uh, over there. And later, very close to our times, to the 18th century, uh, was built this road and, of course, the bridge over it. We have uh, we had the luck to be today into the last day where we can visit this bridge and cross it because since tomorrow we'll start into a long process of renovation. And it's called... The Liars Bridge. It's called the Liars Bridge because it's the first cast iron bridge uh, built in Transylvania and in Romania. And when they when they built it for the first time, they built it. Um, they paved it. They put a pavement uh, from wood, which wasn't very well uh, established on the metal structure of the bridge. So uh, for this reason, when you cross it the bridge was uh, uh, creaking, uh, making a lot of noises and was giving you the sensation that will uh, collapse with you from a moment to, to another. You can see the bridge here, from here, uh, surrounded by, uh, by very beautiful flowers on it. And uh, from this um, 
from this thing, from this um, particularity of the bridge that was creaking and was moving uh, pretty badly, the, the wood pavement from it, as, at the beginning, appeared the legend which says that uh, if you tell a lie uh, standing on that bridge, the bridge will collapse and you will die. And your descendants will pay the reparation of the bridge <laughs> to the city hall. <laughs> Uh, of course, because of this legend, we said that if you say a lie on the bridge, the bridge will collapse with you. We have today the name of the uh, liar's bridge. Give it to this uh, to this bridge, and I will give you. Uh, I will tell you a very a very funny story. Uh, I will let you to take some postcards with the council uh, tower. Um, I was I went here uh, probably five years ago with my daughter and uh, with my wife into a visit, and uh, sitting on the bridge with my daughter, uh, her mother, my wife, uh, asked her, Joanne, do you listen to your mother? My daughter was staying to think a little bit and then answered, in this moment, yes. <laughs> she had about five, six years old, something like this. But uh, because she knew the, the story of the bridge, because I tell her the story, <laughs> she was probably afraid to not collapse the, the bridge if she if she is telling a lie okay uh, now i will go with you slowly to the third square of the city the huet square and also the square where it's uh, built the evangelical church uh, i mention it because you know probably already if you follow my my other tours that in 1535, after the reform of Martin Luther, uh, Johannes Honterius, a humanist on, uh, of, from, from Brasov, no, it's not, uh, it's not water. <laughs> yeah, many, many politicians cross it, Peter, but uh, <laughs> no one answered to the questions uh, here on the bridge, because otherwise they have to renovate it many, many times every year. <laughs> okay, so uh, the um, evangelical church, uh, were renovated into the last two years and a half, three years, and now it looks really, really beautiful. It's a very beautiful construction, and uh, even for me, it's a premiere today because uh, I didn't went till uh, till now into this renovated uh, church. So I'm uh, I'm really curious to know how they uh, how they do it. Yes, Sabina. <laughs> okay, as you can see. It's a market in here. During the summertime, the markets are all the time in uh, in here around of the church in this uh, uh, part of Sibiu. And uh, before to enter into the church, I want to show you the apprentice's house. I've told you about the guilds many times that the people which uh, were entered to the guild were mostly men because they had to get married with the daughters of the uh, the other members of the guild. They started as an apprentice around 14 years old. They was working till 16 years old. They get an exam. If they if they graduated, they had the right to. <laughs> yes, I'm glad you like it. That's my my story with my daughter. Uh, they uh, they had to go uh, for about two two years to travel outside of the city, working, um, practicing their skills. And after that, uh, they had the permission to come back into the city, sustain another exam, uh, pay an amount of money, and get married, as I said, with one of the daughters of the other members of that guild. Uh, this, um, this custom of the traveling apprentices, uh, it still exists in Europe, into the countries with, uh, uh, with a lot of uh, German population, in Austria and Switzerland, in Germany. And here in Sibiu, the people are coming uh, those uh, those travel apprentices are coming every year. Uh, they are living here into this uh, house of the apprentices, where you can see the yellow uh, house in front of me, near the tower of the staircase, as it is called the other construction, uh, painted in white. And um, they are uh, they are coming here. They are working for the city um, in in wood, in metal. They are blacksmiths. Uh, they had many uh, many many professions and uh, specialities. But I want to show you especially this uh, thick beam with a lot of metal objects um, inside of it. Um, before of this, let me tell you this, uh, show you these panels. 
uh, with the with our uh, apprentices, which are coming here in Sibiu. You can see you can see them dressed and working uh, for the city, and even here into a larger picture. This is the costume which was used by the uh, which was used by them since the 18th, 17th century. And here they are in Sibiu, into another year's working. So uh, this beam of, uh, of wood, it have a lot of metal objects in it. Why? Uh, because all the blacksmith apprentices, which are passing by here, left uh, a trace uh, of their passing, uh, standing into an object made by metal, by their hands, just to uh, remain as a memory for the people uh, from the city. You can see are a lot of things made by metal here into this uh, here into this uh, beam of wood. A tradition which uh, is here since uh, many, many centuries. And now uh, I will go with you inside of the evangelic church. to tell you and to show you all of the beauties of this, uh, of this big um, cathedral from Transylvania. In front of us, it's the Samuel von Bruckenthal Museum, uh, Museum uh, High School, a very old uh, educational institution from the city. The idea is that this evangelical cathedral, it's a Gothic one, as you can see, was starting to be built around 1230, a Romanic chapel. And uh, here where we are right now, it was a, a small hill. And on the top of that small hill, the people built this beautiful Gothic cathedral uh, on the ruins of uh, that previous Romanic church starting with the 14th century, ended somewhere around 1520, the Gothic church. I've told you that there are many people buried inside. Their tombstones are into an exhibition, which is displayed right here at the main entrance. And all the bones of the people buried in here were taken out from sanitary reasons and buried exactly in the place that I show you to you right now, under these beautiful flowers on this place, are buried all the bones of the people buried uh, in here into the evangelical cathedral, including the bones of Mick Natural Row, the son of Dracula, which was killed in front of this church, in front of the main entrance. I will enter uh, at my turn in here, and uh, I will tell you the rest of the stories after that. Vă las ăștia așa și vorbim după aia când ies. Ok. Da, vin acum. Uh, so we have the tombstones, which, uh, for example, belongs to one of the most important characters from Sibiu, buried in here. We have the name of them. Many of them members of the of the guilds from here. Other re representatives of the Germans into the Parliament of Transylvania. You can see how beautiful they are. Here. Up here, it's uh, a very beautiful carving into the memory of Samuel von Bruckenthal. You can see it, uh, his image into the middle of it, which was uh, it was buried in uh, in this church. His, his tombstone is not uh, is not in here because um, of the fact that uh, was 
made in, uh, in Austria at Vienna was transported by the boat on the Danube and then on the river Muresh and as far as I know was sunk into the river Muresh and uh, disappeared. I hope, the, um, I hope the signal is okay in here because um, the church have uh, pretty thick walls and I hope to not have problems with the signal. I want to show you something else. Here it's one of the altars which used to be in, into the church. As you can see on the both sides of the cross where Christ is uh, crucified, we have a text in Latin which uh, try to cover the image of uh, Virgin Mary and Mary Magdalene at uh, staying at the bottom of the cross. You can see only their hands around of the, of the cross where Christ is crucified. Uh, they were covered after the uh, moment of the, um, when this church changed their religion from Catholic to Protestant because the, uh, the evangelical church uh, do not accept it, uh, religious images of, uh, of Mary and of the saints. I will continue till I will go inside of the church with, the, with those images of the people which used to be buried there. This one, for example, it used to be one of the representatives of the, of the Germans into the parliament of Transylvania, which was a principate starting with uh, 1600. And here you can see one of the one of the graves which used to be in this uh, which used to be into this church it belongs to a man which was buried here around 1600 this was the the crypt where they used to be buried it's a very good example for you to see and now I will continue to get along going to the center of the church here to the next to the walls you can see a lot of tombstones of the people which uh, was buried in here and not only on the left side but also on the right side too Pretty much the ones which a book in their hands uh, used to be priests. The hand, uh, the the book represents the Bible. Here, as you remember from yesterday from Sigishara, the uh, a member of the Furriers Guild. You can see their coat of arms, and I think that we have the luck to hear the organ singing. It's an organ with 6,000 tubes. It's the largest in Transylvania. And you have the luck to see it singing because uh, this was happened pretty rare. And now I'm entering into the main church. You can see the vaults. The church was renovated really really beautiful you can recognize that uh, that beautiful uh, that beautiful gothic okay i will go to the front of the church to the shrine the benches were a little bit modified in here and uh, near uh, one of the latest um, columns from here, it used to be the place where uh, it was the tombstone and the grave of uh, Samuel von Bruckendal, somewhere here. In this place, uh, it used to be his, uh, his grave. And... Uh, you can see the pulpit, which have the four evangelists displayed around of it, and the Gothic uh, decoration at the superior level. I'll 
And so I want to show you the organ, which it have, as I said, about 6,000 tubes. It's the largest in Romania with Baroque decorations. That's the majority of the houses from the city. And here are some beautiful carvings which showed us one of the uh, one of the coat of arms and one of the stories of the most uh, richest families from Sibiu of the Germans. This is like a genealogical tree of one of the families. I will try to give you some opportunities to take pictures before to go to the main altar to show you the single fresco which survived into the into this church after the the reform times are rich and noble families from Sibiu which have their uh, coat of arms displayed here into the church here it's another one and the vaults as you can see are a serial of the vaults, of the Gothic vaults, which uh, gave to us a nave church built as the, as the Dominicans uh, planned to do it, just to have space all the people of the community inside of this church. <clears throat> Here it's another small organ used uh, for the small uh, uh, concerts and religious services. And also in here, I can show you at the top, hang on the wall, it's the single cannonball which hit this church during of a siege of the city. And because it was the first and the single one they displayed for us to see it, into this, uh, into this cathedral. Of course that, as I told you, everything was uh, covered, uh, were, were plastered after the reform of Martin Luther, all the, all the frescoes uh, were plastered, excepting uh, a big fresco representing the crucifixion of, uh, of Christ, which was obviously uh, renovated during of these years. And uh, today I will be able to, to show it to you uh, during of this visit, but uh, I have to wait a little bit for my colleague to finish with his group and to show you till there the altar, which is a very, which is a very modern one, also built into the Gothic style with Christ and Peter and Paul on the both sides of the cross. Uh, usually, Peter and Paul are represented uh, during of the altar because uh, <coughs> they are guarding it, so that's why they are there. Okay. I will... Uh, I will try to show you from here a big fresco. It's a fresco which, uh, as you can see, represents the crucifixion. And uh, here, till I will take a seat to show you, they displayed some of the remains of the first Romanic church, which uh, used to be here into the, into the church. And you can see the, the walls and all the, all the constructions which used to be previously here. Okay. And now I will go to show you the painting. So the painting, as you can see, represents the crucifixion of Christ. 
and we have Christ in the middle with the two feet on the both sides. And here in the first plan, we have a group of ladies with Mary Magdalene and one of the ladies, it seems to faint. You see it in the middle of them. Uh, the secret here, it's, uh, you know, the painters, when they used to paint uh, churches in the old times, they used to paint the figures of uh, some people that they used to know. And in this case, the figure of the, of the lady, which seems to faint, it's the face of the daughter of the mayor from that period of time, uh, because the painter was in love with her. And he was painting her, herself, that man with the beard, which with the spear push into the rib of Jesus Christ. And imagine what's happened when the mayor knew about the passion that the painter had for his daughter. The poor painter uh, lost his head into the big square from Sibiu, but the paint remained. Also, I want to show you another characters from this painting. Here, for example, we have the, the image of uh, Sigismund of Luxembourg, uh, an emperor of, uh, of Hungary into the 14th century. And as well, King Matthias of Hungary, uh, the most uh, important kings of the, of the Hungarians into the 15th century, <coughs> which are displayed here for their contributions to the construction uh, of this church. The one with the spare uh, was the painter. The lady which is fainting here, it was the daughter of the mayor, which was in love by the painter. And now I will invite you to do a game. But because the, the painting, it's, uh, it's pretty dark, probably you'll not see it. Try to find um, the image of Christ in this painting because he appeared about seven times in here. So one, <coughs> one time, one time he appeared into the middle of the painting, crucified. Then he appeared here to the left at his uh, birth. Third, he appeared here in the middle at his ascension to the, to the heaven. And uh, here, in the third one, he appeared four times at his baptism. Okay. Fifth, he appeared in this place. You can see him on that buttress. And sixth time, he appeared down here. Seventh place, where he appeared uh, but it's very difficult to be discovered. It's in here, on the other buttress, with a sword taking out from his mouth. It's a very common image of the apocalypse, where uh, the word of God, it's the truth which cut like a sword all the sins and all the bad things which are, which are done by the, by the people. So that's the seventh image of Christ. Okay. And now, before to before to leave uh, before to leave the church. Also, I want to tell you another important thing about Sibiu. Uh, here we have one of the most important uh, priest school. Um, of the Greek Orthodox Church from uh, from Transylvania, which is in Sibiu, and a very important uh, bishopric also um, of the Greek Orthodox Church. I will not leave the church before to show you the tombstone of Michna Cerrou, the son of uh, Vlad the Impaler, and you will see that it's a very... Um, it's a very... Um, it's a very... I don't know. It's a tombstone which doesn't seem very important. When you will see it, you will not believe that it belongs to him. It's very simple, having only a cross on it, 
just to not uh, no it's not this one just to not uh, let the people to recognize it very easy i will go up on this staircase and i will show you the the tombstone which is up here it was moved from the uh, previously place I you can see from much much closer the the stone which is placed in the middle of the gothic vault and here that's the tombstone of Mignature Row the son of Dracula build uh, with him what happened that he was killed in um, he was killed in front of this church he was murdered actually and uh, he was assassinated and buried in here it's only a cross it's a very simple monument comparing with all the others that you uh, that you saw it into the into the exhibition but it's very interesting that <laughs> and I'll tell you something which is not proved yet probably will not be proved in this world <laughs> uh, Prince Charles of Great Britain made some researches in uh, a couple of years ago if you don't know uh, probably around 30 years old you know um, so Prince Charles have done some uh, Some, some, some researches and he discovered that uh, his family his mother Queen of England and all of the others have a, a direct line bloodline with the family of Vlad the Impaler Dracula one of the descendants of Vlad the Impaler Dracula was married with uh, with some noble people from Transylvania which at that turn was married in Europe and somehow they arrived um, to have descendants into the British uh, royal house. Of course, uh, nothing was proved yet because they are not, uh, not in clear with uh, all those marriages. But uh, if something like this will happen and will be proved, imagine what the shock will be all over the world. Um, to have uh, descendants from Dracula on the throne of Great Britain. That's why I said I don't think this will happen uh, in this world. And uh, also uh, Prince Charles uh, had a very beautiful uh, residence and house in, uh, in Transylvania where he used to come uh, every year for, for about... Uh, opa? for about a week and to stay here into the village of Viskri it's another German village uh, from Transylvania where he used to come and stay and probably uh, this fall uh, I will try to to get there to, to Viskri to present you the village because it's a German village uh, conserved preserved uh, in a very good condition exactly as it used to be 150 years ago and um, and um, it's uh, it's really beautiful to see that the people are still living uh, as they as they used to live many 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 years ago in there and also they have a very beautiful uh, fortified church into Viskri uh, where I will uh, try to uh, to to get to to have a life from that village and uh, that village was uh, raised and developed a lot with the help of Prince Charles, which invested a lot of money in, uh, in that village and into the artisans, which are still working there. I came till here just because I want you to have the opportunity for some good pictures of the cathedral. I'll try to give you a good angle for pictures including the including the tower even that it's pretty difficult to do it <laughs> probably like this 
In front of the cathedral, maybe you observe the statue, which belonged to to Teutsch. It's one of the it's one of the former priests of this uh, uh, of this reformed uh, church from here, from Sibiu, and uh, also he was one of the defenders of the rights of the Germans from Transylvania in front of the Hungarian kingdom and in front of the Austro-Hungarian empire from later. He wrote some uh, important books that you can see it into the statue. So he keep his right hand on a column where you can see a bronze medal with, the, with those two knights with swords, Hermann and, the, uh, and one of his knights which uh, founded the city of Sibiu and those swords uh, cross swords appeared on the coat of arms and also above that uh, that medal uh, are a lot of uh, papers which represent uh, important documents uh, written by uh, by Teutsch uh, in his uh, in his long life here in uh, in Sibiu this was this was pretty much uh, my tour from here I will end it in uh, into the um, into the big square where I uh, where I started it. And uh, before to do this, I will ask you if you have some questions to ask at the end of this tour. Maybe it's something that you want to know much better or to ask me. That's why I'm here. Um, my next tours will be only next weekend and uh, will be on uh, one of the most important fortresses in Transylvania. It used to be the headquarter of the Teutonic Knights and I will uh, talk to you uh, along of that tour about the Crusades, the Crusaders, about the importance of the, um, of the Crusaders into the split of the Christian Church, into the schism from uh, 1054. Because you will see it's a very important connection. Also, I will talk to you along of that tour about the reasons of the people to start those crusades uh, and how were formed the main groups uh, of, the, um, of the knights that you know it, the Templars, the Teutonic, uh, and the uh, order of uh, Knight of St. John, of, of the Hospital St. John from Accra. So uh, uh, follow my account, because I will have uh, many, many uh, other tours uh, this, uh, this year. And of course, if you are thinking to travel to Romania, to have a real tour in here, uh, you can contact me by my uh, travel agency, which is Visit Transylvania Travel. If you Google it, uh, visit Transylvania Travel, you will arrive exactly on my website, on visittransylvania.ro and uh, there you can message me and uh, I can do, a, I can organize a tour for you in, in Romania, not only in Transylvania. Uh, Senor Cabrera, I'm glad that you enjoyed the tour. I hope you, uh, you enjoy it, all of you. I hope you like it. I hope that you learn a lot of new things. About, uh, about Romania, that's a plane which goes to the airport from Sibiu. And uh, as I said, follow my account and uh, follow my future tours, because if you don't, you have no idea what you will lose. <laughs> uh, I wish you a good night, a good day, and a good morning. And, uh, and uh, I wait you for the next ones. Uh, Bye bye to you all. The account it's uh, my account it's Romania tours with Nico Sabina, and uh, the travel agency it visit Transylvania travel. You're welcome, Ina. You're welcome, Marja. Uh, I wait for you for the next tours. Thank you very much to you all. Bye bye.